Hello, welcome. Um, I hope it's not strange that the introduction was actually in German, although the talk is, will be held in English. Um, but I think this was uh, announced like that on the schedule. Okay, so welcome to the Bits and Bum Movement for Digitalization and Sustainability, the current needs of bits and trees. Um, uh, just to make the pun complete, uh, I changed uh, the translation of bits and bäume to bits and trees. Um, so what are we talking about today? Um, first, I want to introduce myself. Uh, then um, I want to talk about some of the topics uh, we, uh, we're dealing with in bits and bäume. Um, then I will uh, describe um, the initial conference in 2018. Um, then the demands that came out of this conference. Um, then I will describe the movement that grew out of the uh, conference. Um, and then I will outline uh, some ways to act, which then uh, hopefully guides perfectly uh, into the, uh, the discussion. So um, first to myself, uh, I'm uh, Rainer Rehak. I have a background in computer science and philosophy. Um, I uh, work at the Weizmann Institute for the Network Society as a researcher, and I'm active in the Forum Computer Professionals for Peace and Social Responsibility. Um, and uh, I was uh, co-initiating the Bits and Bäume conference. Um, just one word uh, in advance uh, regarding the framing uh, of, of environmentalism, uh, sustainability. Um, uh, I'm not so much uh, in favor of the framing that we have to protect nature um, because uh, the earth does not really care about the human beings. So, uh, of course, once the humans are gone, um, it just needs a certain hundred thousands of years and then everything is be okay again. So I think it's really important to say uh, what we're talking about and what we're protecting is also our livelihoods. So we all live in symbi uh, symbiosis. Uh, and you could, in a technical way, say nature provides services we live, uh, we need to, to live. Uh, so it's, you know, you can see nature as its own value, uh, of course, but uh, we're actually just uh, fighting for survival. So this is just to make, to make this somehow clear. So um, the topics, uh, so what, what are we, what, what is the, the whole thing with the digitalization and sustainability about? Well, first, uh, I would consider uh, it, digitalization somehow, the computerization, algorithmization, and datafication that takes place all across the board. A computerization means really hardware put everywhere, IoT and such things. Algorithmization and datafication, I think, are uh, pretty um, um, clear terms here. Um, in terms of sustainability, um, I want to talk about the ecological, economical, social, and maybe informational uh, sustainability here. Um, so you could say sustainability means a stable, uh, condition somehow with a good life uh, that provides a good life for everyone. Um, well, first I start with the um, ecological um, uh, sustainability. Some maybe some data uh, on the material footprint of the digital systems we're using. Uh, One percent of the global emissions are online videos. Um, that's eighty percent of all data traffic. Um, if you add hardware and everything, uh, you're maybe around a few percent in energy use for. Uh, for those systems. Um, maybe one gigabyte in transfer traffic needs around uh, um, 0.06 uh, kilowatt hours. So that's kind of one hour of Netflix. It's uh, um, half an hour, uh, 30 watts light bulb, plus minus. Uh, however, uh, if we take the example of Netflix, uh, they try to be CO2 neutral um, by themselves, but uh, of course they are intermediaries, um, which cannot be controlled. So we see it's not that easy. Um, just to say, you know, I'm, I, I, I try to be climate neutral. Um, some people say Google uses the same amount of energy as the city of San Francisco. Um, at one point, Google says they have 40% energy saving applied right now. However, uh, the rebound effect uh, kicks in if you say that uh, maybe 100 new data centers are being built. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really, really not so easy to, to, to count those numbers. Um, in Germany, there are data centers uh, that last year took the energy of four medium-sized coal-fired uh, coal power plants, um, according to Bitkom, and that's maybe 10% of the electricity generation in uh, Germany for internet-related things. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is that uh, all those numbers, you can always, it, it's not so easy to put, to put a, a clear number on, on consumption if we take uh, energy 
uh, production um, into account if it's all uh, renewably created, so where's the problem? Uh, but still we have the hardware, um, where does it come from? And uh, so all those questions are quite, quite complex. Um, on the other hand, you could also say uh, increasing um, online usage, of course, online banking is, is increasing, but on the other hand, you may, may need less branch offices, um, but maybe the back office is the same. Uh, the same question applies with physical meetings or video conferences, which we have right now, the topic. Um, of course, people are maybe then more in home office, um, uh, less traveling, less office use, uh, but on the other hand, and it's not a, a very small uh, point, you have heating costs and electricity generation then on another place, in another spot, maybe with uh, different kinds of hardware. Um, and because of uh, digitalization, new behaviors emerge. Uh, so you can't really say, you know, it's, it's not so easy to say if this gets less, this gets more. So this is, uh, those are complicated aspects. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is it's not so easy if we look at certain small aspects to see if it's good or not, but we have to, we have to put a target, we have to put a goal uh, in the terms of economic, uh, uh, ecological sustainability. This is um, right now we have emissions and uh, there's a 66% chance for 1.5 degrees um, with a certain budget right now. Uh, that means uh, this budget, if we take business as usual, uh, we have around eight years time globally and then we have to cut to zero to stay within this in this limits um or you can also if you like not factually argument but politically argue uh to stay within the paris agreement so uh which limits kind of the the, the emissions and so this is the goal the goal is not you know how can we save it a little bit here or a little bit there but we have to we have to look at those indicators. But of course, there are other aspects of sustainability, and this is where it uh, gets really interesting. Um, uh, it gets really interesting um, for uh, our movement or for the idea um, because we have uh, the informational world connected to economical and social and informational um, sustainability. So as said before, um, uh, we're shifting our lives into technical dependency somehow. We need digital infrastructures that are independent from individual use. Um, we have uh, data, informational knowledge that's being reflected within all those digital infrastructures. So how do we deal with this? What does um, sustainability mean in this aspect uh, concerning also the software use we use and also concerning political processes that are maybe enabled by technology and also um, um, uh, uh, and also technology uh, has to be uh, made more part of democratic and negotiation processes. Um, you could also look at, for example, internet and advertising where uh, right now the ad industry is just used for increased in consumption. So you see a very clear connection here between sustainability and um, um, uh, digitalization. Um, and this also part of uh, us always constantly using new devices if the old ones break or if they're not usable anymore. Um, so it's resource consumption as a whole, which is, is a problem and which is directly at the, at the corner of digitalization and sustainability. But we can also look at digital rights management. Is repairing allowed? Is sharing allowed? Um, and we look at uh, the economic parts uh, of monopolies, um, privacy and surveillance. Um, what does it mean when there's a lot of power over societies and individuals? Uh, how does it influence democratic processes? This is also directly in the middle of those, uh, those two topics. Um, so you could also say there's a representative crisis in democracy uh, since many people support a, a shift to sustainability, uh, but somehow it doesn't reflect in policies. Um, so there's a, there's a big problem. Um, and we also come to problematic questions like um, if free software was uh, everywhere but uh, we should have a look at how this free software is being created. If this is a hobby project of a person, um, then it's, it's, there's little real reliability, uh, but this is of course not a problem of free software, but how, how could we create an environment where free, free software is the norm and where the people who work there are not close to burnout all the time. So how to create stable communities, maybe this is also something to learn from the sustainability, uh, sustainability folks. Um, 
yeah, other uh, aspects are maybe electricity and transport grids that needs to be uh, updated uh, and changed according to sustainability goals. Uh, lots of IT is needed there. Um, and if we take, uh, let's say, the IT people into those discussions, which are already there, of course, uh, but that doesn't make it um, so easy for the sustainability people to fall for the usual blockchain and AI scam. Um, as last interesting topic is maybe trade agreements. Uh, where usually uh, more and more there is IT policy included um, and those are questions of sovereignty and, and control, especially uh, for the countries in the global south. So, you, so we see uh, there's a lot connected here if we open this uh, box, um, uh, maybe, the, yeah, this box. So interestingly, we somehow know what to do, but the client, so we need to limit global warming by limiting efficient, uh, emissions. Um, maybe some people suggest CO2 budgets or caps. Uh, we need to abolish subsidies, uh, roll out uh, renewable energies. Um, we need more, more sustainable mobility concepts, uh, maybe vegetarian food, regional, seasonal, um, down to uh, changing the whole economic system. And in all those aspects, we see um, digitalization plays a crucial role there. Um, how do we internalize externalities? How we do? How do we break up monopolies? I mean, we see that right now uh, with Facebook, with Google, with all th all those big companies. Is it a problem with tech, or is it a problem with monopolies, or is it a combination of both? Um, and we also should ask um, with the application of technology: uh, Is the use case does it really help with sustainability? Um, we all know the paperless office, uh, which now has more paper than before. So obviously, computers did not help in this aspect, but those are the points where we need to take a closer look uh, what technological solutions actually provide. Um, on the social level, we have to stop exploitation, um, check about fair distribution of benefits of productivity. Um, and uh, finally, uh, informational, we have to take data protection seriously. Um, maybe you think about commons-based peer production in hardened software, but in also other digital goods. Uh, and think about free knowledge, uh, open knowledge, and free cultural products. Uh, um, saying that free always doesn't mean it not it doesn't have to it doesn't mean that it doesn't have to cost anything, uh, but it's not restricting. So, as you might see now, this is very very complex. Uh, uh, this was a um, very very complex bunch of questions, and and uh, um, so at one point. A group of people decided to make a conference in 2018, maybe a small um, view backwards. Um, so uh, a group of organizations uh, found each other, I could say, um, I don't want to read all of them right now, but the idea was to bring together environmental folks, the hackers and techies and the development folks uh, to talk exactly about those uh, topics so that everyone could bring in their uh, abilities and their knowledge, and then to to get in contact with each other and connect the um, the communities, um, with the goal of a common livable future for all and the world for all. Of course, that includes a clean atmosphere, and that also uh, needs a clean data atmosphere. Um, yes. Okay. Um, so. Um, okay, and um, so the the idea was then the reflection on the relation of uh, digitalization and sustainability, um, and, but also sustainability strategies for projects, and um, uh, also to bring in uh, ideas like convivial technology. Um, especially interesting, I found the discussion about the means and purpose relationship. You could say digitalization is a means and sustainability maybe is a purpose. Uh, so like growth, uh, which is not an end in itself, but it should help. But if it doesn't help, we should stop it. So the same question you could make uh, for digitaliz digitalization in certain aspects. Um, because right now, uh, how we digitalize do this, this kind of digitalization, um, it's just putting fire uh, oil to the fire. But of course, the question is not yes, no, but what do we do and how do we do it? Do we use centralized systems or decentralized systems? Um, and all, all those questions. Um, yes. And as a result um, of this conference, uh, there were some 
concrete demands that came out. Uh, I don't want to go into details to so all of them. You can check them out on the website. Uh, but the first point uh, was social ecological objectives and the design of digitalization. So social, environmental and development policy as well as peace objectives should be part of the direction where we're going, right? We're talking about technology uh, so we can shape it uh, as we need it. Um, and it should also foster human rights, climate protection goals, as well as the end of hunger and poverty, because this is the ultimate goal. Um, and the, all the other demands uh, you can you can check out yourself uh, later. Um, um, as you see, it goes from data protection, monopolies, democracy, education. Uh, so all the questions somehow I've been addressing before, um, we try to put it in a shape uh, that's easy to understand. So it's a small leaflet actually. Um, and it's supported by, um, um, at least in Germany, major organizations from the uh, hacker area, the tech area, and um, also the sustainability and ecological area. So I'm not going into those details right now. But the question was then, OK, we can't control and we don't want to control this whole thing. So that's why we said um, um, everyone can use the, the bits, uh, bits of Bäume label as, as they please if they uh, adhere uh, to some of our, let's say, rules. Uh, you have to like, work on this, in this direction of the digitalization and sustainability. You have to concentrate on activist science and cyber, civil society, as we know um, um, that companies and uh, especially politicians have their platforms already. So we want to give a voice to the less heard and in our view, more competent uh, actors uh, most of the time. If you support the demands and you live the motto, um, so you, you organize those events according to those principles, anyone can use uh, the bits and Bäume label as they want. We have the, the logo material under free licenses. You can ask for help under bewegung at bitsandbäume.org uh, if you like, and the result was overwhelming. We have branches, pun intended, um, in Dresden, in Berlin, in Hanover, in Dortmund, Osnabrück, Köln. Um, and uh, you have, they come from different areas. Some are closer to the Chaos family, some are closer to the Open Knowledge Foundation family. Some are uh, coming just from university backgrounds. Some come from, uh, yeah, all, all kinds of backgrounds. We have mailing list, a forum, matrix chat. And um, there's even an assembly here at uh, RC3. You can check it out if you find it. Um, it's always part of the game. Um, and today at nine, um, there will also be a matrix chat. You can find all this on the website. Uh, you can check out the, um, um, the videos of the conference uh, that has, had been taking place. And um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the whole movement. That's why it, it got decentralized and it's a really good idea um, um, as it turned out. Um, so finally, we, we get to the last point, the way to act. Well, of course, individual action is good. You know, if you say, I want to be streaming with less uh, resolution, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, but it's always clear to state that there's a structural problem here. We have a total asymmetry with, um, uh, with a lot of subsidies making the cheapest and the most easy option for everything from food uh, to electronics, the actually most um, dangerous one for um, uh, for climate, uh, for um, avoiding a global warming. And so this is something that ne really needs to uh, stop um, and needs to be changed in policy, uh, but that shouldn't stop us from also starting with small experimental projects, um, or with lab projects, with uh, software projects, um, shape local groups, um, uh, go to regulars table, well, we should organize somehow. Um, and you can come, of course, to Bits and Bäume uh, in those different cities if you want, uh, or connect um, to, the, uh, to the online events. So, um, and sometimes maybe it's okay to just uh, switch off uh, the computer and go outside. But uh, I want to finish uh, with a quote from Joseph Weizenbaum. Uh, the question is not how digitalization changes society, but how society uses digitalization. Um, and uh, we try to suggest uh, one way of making it usable um, um, globally for a good life for all. And um, I hope that was not too much and too fast, but now I'm happy to get feedback and questions if there are any. Thanks a lot. Hi, I hope you can hear me, Rainer. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, 
We are right now uh, asking again on the chats and on social media to post questions about your talk. Maybe we can begin. So uh, did you expect uh, this to become some kind of uh, distributed movement, something that started from one from event, really? Um, uh, we have actually not planned this, um, but um, later on we found out that it's it's impossible to um, first to contain it, which we also don't want, but it's also not possible to coordinate this because uh, some of us are um, volunteers, especially in the tech uh, in the tech area. So this is uh, this is just um, not possible. And it, I mean, decentralization uh, decentralization is always a good thing. Uh, that's why we put up those principles. But from the beginning on, that was not the idea, but somehow it uh, got to life. And um, it turns out it was a good idea because uh, at least in the German speaking area, this label has become something like an indicator for a certain discourse. If we think, for example, uh, Silke Helfrich, uh, she organized a project 10 years ago, uh, genes, bites and emissions that always al already tried this. Um, but then there came different names and different discourses. So it was hard to trace to trace that back. Uh, but maybe it works that this kind of open label uh, also helps that people who work on the same uh, on the same issues also find each other better somehow. So we got a question on the chat. Xian is asking, does this mean that there are no big bits and Bäume conferences in the near future? Um, no, that does not mean that. Uh, it's, it's uh, uh, let's say, um, there might certainly be a big bits and Bäume conference in the future, but uh, this should not keep anyone from organizing small ones or other big ones. But I'm, I'm um, let's say, um, some seeds might be already planted and let's see what's happening. That's good. We have another question coming up right now. Um, um, and I seem to have lost it. Then. No. Are there any distributed online events or meetups uh, one could join? I think you went into this a bit in the end, but maybe you could repeat that where people who are now interested yeah. in this can actually meet others. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, not only because of the um, pandemic situation right now, um, but there are meetups planned also for uh, 2021. Well, of course, 2020 is not that long anymore. Um, you could check out uh, on the website. Um, know, on the website up there, uh, there's a connection to the forum and to oh, Matrix wait, chat right. uh, and Matrix chat, and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there we will, uh, there will, not we, I'm also not uh, that connected, but I know it will take place. Um, uh, there you can find the connection to those local uh, tables. And the plan for 2021 is to have a one a bigger exchange that goes just across uh, across the cities. And um, I think this is this is the place to go to check. Uh, but this is def definitely in plan and this is a, a, certainly a good idea. So, I mean, you you did this talking English right now, despite this being something that originated in Germany here. What's basically the internationalization idea you have in mind? Exactly. So, so the idea was somehow um, uh, that uh, a lot of those, um, the work we've, we've been doing and coordinating, um, I see that, that uh, mm, it's necessary to distribute this to, to somehow say, hey, uh, people have been thinking about this already. And for example, in the conference 2018, mm, already the talks, uh, all of the talks have been translated to English as well. Um, so if you check also at media CCCDE, um, you can always uh, choose the language uh, uh, track English. And um, but I just or we just noticed that um, this was nice for the people who have been there. But it has not gained broad attention and um, so this is just an idea to to uh, maybe find others who've been working into this uh, in this direction to see that there's uh, there are other initiatives working and then to uh, join powers and um, somehow try to uh, steer the ship into a more sunny direction again. Um, I can't hear you talking right now. 
sorry, yeah, I didn't want to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I, I'll just say again. I wanted to say there's another uh, question coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, Kulish is asking, where can I see some of the projects uh, that took place in the past two years since the conference? I guess the answer again is your website, maybe? Um, yes, uh, it's partly, but um, it's partly a bit um, distributed. Um, first, the website is a good start, um, but um, let me see. Um, there have been uh, conferences in Dresden, for example, which you can access, yes, via the website, but dresden.bitsenbäume.org, so you can find the documentation there. Um, but there's, uh, I think the forum would be a good idea to ask there if you can't find uh, all those uh, other things. And there, there have been also uh, smaller events like on the Internet Governance Forum 2019, where we were present on Jena at the Great Transformation Conference or the, um, or the forum, which takes place every, I think, three months. Mm -hmm. um, which is a, a discussion format in Berlin, um, um, always to certain topics. Um, and we try to somehow announce it on the website to get this together. But um, as I said, uh, if, if people would like to join, um, it's, we're happy if you're a visionary and bring in your ideas and your content. That's really great. But uh, with all projects, it, it's also nice if you say, well, I actually think it's interesting what's happening there. I don't have uh, the big vision, but uh, I'm happy with uh, tracing what has been happening and, and putting it in our history log uh, in the calendar, which we already have in a very basic structure. Um, this is also greatly helped uh, so that other people don't have this, to do this work twice. Um, so that's why um, you will find some of them on the website, but not all of it. Um, um, but we're happy uh, if, if this could be maybe uh, archived in a more structured way. Yeah, that's also always very important with community work to to put in the hours and actually do the archiving work so that it's preserved for anything that comes comes up later. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this uh, I is, mean uh, sure. Just, Please talk. just as a comment, this is this is a classic example as well of sustainability. Like, how do you create a sustainable uh, project or a sustainable community? Of course, if new people come in. Um, uh, where do they start? You, you need some kind of memory uh, for this in an organizational way. And so this is a very interesting instance of what sustainability also can mean. It's, it's, it doesn't always have to be um, some crazy new ideas. But if we, if we think about the digital archiving and all those questions, this is, this is all part of it, of uh, getting a livable digital environment. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Rainer. I think that's all the questions we have from the audience tonight. Uh, sorry again for, for doing the introduction in, in German. I was just in my mind coming from that. But uh, no I mean, you did it. Uh, anybody in the audience, if you can't find Bits and Bäume because you don't know how to spell it in German, you can try to get, uh, if, you, if you find Vicky Packer, that's our name on Twitter. And we have a new website we just built today, wikipacker.wtf. Uh, um, basically, just click on anything. You'll be linked to to our far plan, to our digital schedule, where you will find information about this talk and all the links uh, that Rainer provided. So, um, this will get and, you to the information yeah. you need. And go to the assembly in the RT, RC3 world. So we are there as well. Oh yes, yeah. So please come find the Bits and Bäume assembly in the RC3 world if you have a ticket. Rainer, thank you so much.